Nuclear energy will make a comeback. Energy is the cornerstone of life and a vital resource. The production of energy can be achieved through various methods, utilizing different sources such as oil, natural gas, hydroelectric power, and nuclear energy. Although these processes stem from different sources, they fundamentally adhere to the same principles. The energy derived from these sources caters to humanity's needs, while alterations in energy production processes can be made, which is crucial in terms of environmental impacts and sustainability. In this video, we will attempt to answer questions about how nuclear energy is generated and why it is preferred. The generally applied method for generating energy is as follows. Boil water to produce steam, direct the resulting steam to turbines, let the turbines spin, and generate electricity, while countries' economies, politicians, and public preferences shape this process whether to burn coal or use nuclear energy. Obtaining nuclear energy is not as straightforward as burning coal. Nuclear energy results from the fission or fusion of atomic nuclei, generating energy from the structural changes in atomic nuclei. Nuclear energy is typically obtained through two primary methods. Firstly, fusion is used. In this method, light atomic nuclei, usually hydrogen, are brought together under high temperature and pressure to create a heavier atomic nucleus. During this process, a large amount of energy is released. Fusion reactions occur in natural sources like the sun and stars, but currently, Producing energy through fusion reactions is not efficient or economical with today's technology. The other method is fission. In this method, heavy atomic nuclei, typically radioactive elements like uranium or plutonium, undergo nuclear fission through neutron bombardment. This fission process releases a large amount of energy, and the resulting neutrons split other nuclei, creating a chain reaction and releasing significant amounts of energy. This process is conducted under control in nuclear power plants. All nuclear reactors on Earth operate based on these principles. But where and how did the idea of obtaining energy using nuclear energy first originate? The concept of obtaining energy using nuclear energy first emerged in the early 20th century when scientific research on the structure and properties of the atom was rapidly advancing. However, the discovery of nuclear fission solidified this idea and revolutionized energy production. Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann, significant German chemists, played a crucial role in the discovery of nuclear fission. In 1938, when they bombarded uranium with neutrons, they observed that uranium atoms were splitting. This event was a previously unknown physical process and was groundbreaking in the field of nuclear energy. The discovery of fission contributed to a broader understanding of Albert Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. This formula demonstrated that small amounts of mass could be converted into enormous amounts of energy. Fission practically proved this theory by showing that large amounts of energy could be released through the splitting of atoms of heavy elements like uranium. This discovery was also utilized in the development of nuclear weapons during World War II. As a result, Hahn and Strassmann's discovery laid the foundation for the modern nuclear energy industry and became a significant part of global energy production. Countries had already started competing to obtain energy from uranium, and the United States emerged as the winner. The results obtained from the Manhattan Project and subsequent knowledge accumulation led to the production of nuclear-based electricity for the first time at the Experimental Breeder Reactor 1 in Idaho, USA, on December 20, 1951. In the following years, atomic energy from 441 nuclear reactors across the United States, the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, and currently 32 different countries worldwide has been converted into electrical energy. Why did these countries choose nuclear energy when they could obtain their energy from coal, natural gas, or hydroelectric power? Firstly, High energy efficiency. Nuclear reactions provide much higher energy efficiency compared to other energy sources. A small amount of nuclear fuel can generate a significant amount of energy. For example, while one kilogram of coal can produce three kilowatt hour and one kilogram of oil can produce four kilowatt hour of electrical energy, one kilogram of uranium enables the production of 50,000 kilowatt hour of electrical energy. Low carbon emissions. 
Nuclear energy has much lower carbon emissions compared to fossil fuels. This is a significant advantage in combating climate change. As a side note, the smoke coming out of nuclear power plant chimneys is only water vapor. Another reason is continuous and stable energy production. Nuclear power plants can produce energy continuously and steadily without depending on daily and seasonal variations like renewable energy sources. This provides a reliable source of meeting energy demand. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly for politicians, is energy independence. Nuclear energy reduces dependency on energy imports and is a significant step towards achieving energy independence for countries. This is crucial for energy security. Even if you don't have underground resources, if you have enough nuclear power plants, like France, you can generate a significant portion of your energy from nuclear sources. Despite its many favorable characteristics, why do some people oppose nuclear power plants? The most significant reasons are the accidents that occur in these nuclear power plants. One of the most significant accidents is the Chernobyl disaster, which occurred on April 26, 1986. Let's take a closer look at this event, where even the death toll is not precisely known, and the environmental damage is only estimated. In 1986, during a test at a nuclear reactor in Chernobyl, things went wrong. The reactor's cooling system was shut down, leading to the uncontrolled heating of nuclear materials and increased pressure. These reactors were a type with safety gaps, cheaply and rapidly built. They were supposed to operate at low power, but this was not achieved during the test. Operators attempted to reduce the reactor's power, but they failed to do so correctly. The control rods were not fully withdrawn, and the reactor's power increased uncontrollably. Safety rules were violated during the test. Necessary precautions were not taken, and control over a situation that needed monitoring was lost. The safety systems in the reactor were insufficient or disabled to stop the uncontrolled reaction, leading to uncontrolled increases in temperature and pressure in the reactor. As a result, all these factors combined to cause the Chernobyl disaster. This catastrophe was a significant lesson in nuclear energy safety and led to the development of safer technologies and procedures. The Chernobyl disaster is classified as a level 7 nuclear accident on the International Nuclear Event Scale. Another accident that reached level 7 in history occurred in Japan. We can attribute the nuclear accident in Japan to the Great East Japan earthquake that occurred on March 11, 2011, followed by the massive tsunami. On March 11, 2011, a large earthquake struck in the Tohoku region of northeastern Japan. The magnitude of this earthquake was measured at 9.0, and was one of the most powerful earthquakes recorded in Japan. This earthquake affected emergency systems designed to shut down operations at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. However, following the earthquake, a massive tsunami struck the coast. The tsunami breached the plant's vulnerable seawalls, inundating reactor buildings. This inundation rendered the cooling systems ineffective, leading to overheating, melting of nuclear fuel cores, and the release of radioactive materials from the reactors. Aside from Chernobyl, where there were no casualties, but significant environmental damage occurred. According to the International Atomic Energy Agency's report, 44% of these accidents were attributed to human error, 40% to mechanical failure, and 3% to external factors such as earthquakes and floods. However, the negative aspects related to nuclear energy aren't solely attributed to accidents. The issue of what to do with nuclear waste, which hasn't been solved even in the most modern facilities, concerns most facilities storing or burying such waste. Some of these wastes may not disappear for hundreds of years. Additionally, the cost and long construction periods of power plants, as well as the regular maintenance required for safety, make these plants a subject of debate in some countries. Why is nuclear energy becoming so integrated into our lives again? Global warming stands out as one of the primary reasons. The goal of the Paris Climate Agreement is to limit the increase in global average surface temperature to 2 degrees and to zero out carbon emissions. To achieve these goals, abandoning coal production and returning to renewable energy sources are necessary. However, due to the intermittency of renewable energy, unsuitability of every country's geography, and low efficiency, politicians see nuclear energy as a solution.
Another reason accelerating the process is the reflection of the war between Russia and Ukraine on energy prices. France produces around 70% of its energy from nuclear power and is therefore less affected by this process than other European countries. Countries like Germany, which closed their reactors after the Fukushima plant accident, procured energy at high prices and reconsidered this process. On the other hand, the classification of nuclear power as green energy also increased interest. For instance, the UK is allocating a budget of 20 billion pounds to build new nuclear power plants. A similar event occurred during the 1974 oil crisis. OPEC countries prioritized nuclear energy to break their intervention power and energy prices. Currently, only 10% of the world's energy is supplied by nuclear energy, but this percentage is expected to increase in the coming years. Nuclear energy can be an important step in meeting the complex energy needs we face. However, each country must consider its own economic, social, and physical structure when taking this step. While nuclear energy can inherently be both efficient and clean, factors such as human error and the pursuit of profit can always pose a risk, as seen in disasters like Fukushima. Currently, there are 53 nuclear reactors under construction in 17 countries worldwide. Are these nuclear reactors a necessity to meet the world's energy needs? Or are they just a theater for more profit and political gain? In my opinion, it is normal and logical for nuclear energy to be preferred due to its cleanliness and efficiency. However, when the human and power gain factors come into play, no one can guarantee that disasters like Fukushima or Chernobyl will not happen again. Nevertheless, with advancing technology and increasing regulations, nuclear energy could indeed be our only solution in combating global warming.